Born Isle of Man, brought up Manchester, Australia, house in Miami. Right. Is this home? I think this is basically home, yes. This is where I feel that home is. What constitutes home then? Is it sort of the nicest bricks and mortar because this is pretty nice or is it? And, and also uh, England because of the culture I, mm. I like and, uh, and, um, and because of, you know, I'm British and it's, it's just where I feel most at home. Yeah. Now, in this fantastic house, you've had a few, a few visitors wandering around who are yeah. slightly uninvited. How, how have you coped? Well, there's a few drunks from the village, you mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah your mates. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you've had stalkers and, and obsessive fans, haven't you, as of yeah, course you would. Yeah, the odd one, which is, um, I mean, fortunately, it, it, was, it turned out to be quite safe, but people try to break in yeah. and stuff like that in the early hours of the morning, which you have to be on your guard for. Well, how do you come to terms with that? And is that an aspect of the the fame and the industry that... Well, yeah, I mean, it's just something that happens from time to time. I think a, a lot of fans, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but there are uh, a rare few that will actually think because they followed you so closely, mm. they, they begin to build up a, a familiarity kind of complex where they feel that when they see you, that you should know them. Mm. You see, and that's what you have to be careful of. And when you don't acknowledge them, mm. they get very upset. Back to this gorgeous house. Now, tell me about summer. It's obviously steeped in history. It is. A thousand years old. A thousand years old, yep. Who's wandering around within these worlds well, then? I have to admit that I've not personally seen a ghost in this house, but my personal assistant has right. seen a ghost quite a few times, walking in and out of walls, even in my dining room and my living room. And I have a font which fills up with water on its own accord. And how does that make you feel? Are these friendly ghosts? I mean, I'm yeah. fascinated by it. I it love it. It doesn't bother but... me at all. Because yeah. I always see it, I, I've been on my own in the house before, and it's always, I always take the, the, the point that it's my house, and I'm the one that's in charge here, so if there's any ghosts here, they're going to have to deal with me, and, uh, and I'm not going to be scared of them. Oh, that's pretty confident. It is, I, I think thought so. That, you yeah. know. I think it's pretty nice of me, actually. Well, if they can go through walls, I'd say they've got kind of the upper hand on you. Uh, see, I don't, I don't think there's any such thing as ghosts. And so I think what we're seeing is when we see a ghost, we're seeing people living their lives a few hundred years ago for a split second. So but if that's a ghost, isn't it? Not necessarily. They could be actually living. You're actually viewing the past going on at the same time. So it's... That's it's a whole... <laughs> it is. But you a see, whole big it's a more porridge, scientific <laughs> way of looking at something rather yeah. than, a, than a paranormal or supernatural way of looking at so if you need scientific theories or, or, or look to scientific mm -hmm. or look to science for things like ghosts yeah. for explanations how do you marry that with your wife who practices as a, a druid i mean you've got um, your, a stone circle that yeah in your but it's not it, there, there are no rituals or anything like oh. that you know in, in actual essence it is, it is a way of life and a way of thinking Mm. more than anything, and it's a positive and a good way mm. of, of thinking and a good way of life. You can have benefits. Does it take the place of an organised religion No, not at all. Not no. at all. It, it is a way of thinking, purely. Mm. Because you have your chapel. Yes. It's absolutely It's a consecrated chapel. chapel and has been for 800 mm. years. Yeah. You know, we haven't changed it. It's, um, it was actually a consecrated Catholic chapel. Right. And it's remained that way. It hasn't changed. But that's a kind of a historical obligation or duty as much as your own sort of religious need um i think you know uh, all religions form particularly even christian ones form a basis of, of good and, mm. uh, and, have, and and there's value in all of them and um, we can learn from all of them and i think that's it. it's important that, that that we maintain a lot of that in this world uh, with the way the world is have you ever brought this spiritual side into your music? How much of an influence would it have? Well, I don't really like to introduce too much because it, 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 to actually introduce it into music is, is a different aspect of, of, of what people... It's not something that, that people accept in the mainstream of, you know, a spiritual uh, kind uh, in music. Uh, one obviously would like to do that, but it's not something that's, that's totally accepted. So there aren't sort of... You wouldn't give messages, but there must be a reflection of how well, you're feeling. Well, there's a reflection of how I feel, yes, um, but I don't like to preach. Mm -hmm. So we started by saying, going solo. People probably want a little bit of reassurance that, in heart, BG. Yes, I am a BG, <laughs> and the BGs will be recording again in the new year. 
I love that. I am a BG. I am a BG. <laughs> well, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Well, quite sad, though, because uh, as, as I think we said earlier, uh, that interview was recorded several days ago before the sad news about Morris Gibb, who's Robin's twin who died in Miami in the very early hours of this morning. So our real sympathies with uh, the Gibb family. Great group of people. Yeah.